This project is to create a web page that is responsive, which means that it can be shown visibly or be shown well on any device that somebody may open your page on, whether it be a telephone, a smartphone, a tablet, or a actual computer monitor. So I have put something into your modules online. Um, if you go in there to the responsive website module in the class, the responsive design with media queries, I put in something here called media queries demo 2. So go ahead and pop that open, um, download that. That's the files that we're going to be working with here for starters, <clears throat> or that I am working with here. And you can use it as a core, not necessarily my layout, not my HTML, but the media queries that I put in for you are fairly standard. Um, so they're a good starting place, so you're not just randomly throwing in media queries. Additionally, let's take a look at the assignment in here so you can see what it is that is assigned, what this assignment entails. So I want you to have at least three wireframes. And what I want you to do here is I want you to actually draw up your sizes, your website before you create it, because it is so much easier to actually uh, create your sites if you know what you are doing in advance. Um, if you're just winging it, trying to change things in the different sizes, it's going to be very, very difficult. So do draw, either draw them up with pen and pencils or, you know, we've talked about Balsamic before, balsamic.com. Um, I think there's a w link inside of the module somewhere, or, or there has been in previous modules, which is what I like to use. It's so much easier just to drag and drop sections on the page. Then I want you to use the Mary Qu Media Queries to develop three different sizes. I want at least one object to be hidden depending on the screen width um, and I want everything to work clearly. Um, you can change background images, width of objects, all kinds of things that so you can have fun. And also in here we're going to be discussing box sizing because now we've completed the box model quiz but there is kind of a different, easier, more simplified, updated way to uh, to deal with box models, especially, uh, anyway, so let's get into that. So, I have in here, if you open up the things that I have given you, I have just a basic HTML layout and I just threw a bunch of just stuff in here. Notice I am using the semantic tags for HTML5. I have my sections and articles and things like that. So do pay attention to the structure of the page because a lot of people have been kind of giving me pages where articles and sections and things are pretty much just thrown in in random. And really articles and sections should be set up like a newspaper. You have the local news section of the article and then you have all the different articles that are within that section. So kind of think of it that way. Um, anyway, so this is basic. I have no style information in here. And then let's take a look at the CSS. And this is what I'm saying that you can reuse if you so choose to use it. Um, so, um, the way this is set up is I have just the basic this is a catch-all. It's usually the way I start and you always design what is your basic you start with the small screen you'll hear the hear the term a lot now mobile first so you should be designing here for the basic what is just strictly in the small screen now I did put in this other section here for you this is something if you have something that is only going to occur in the small screen and you don't want to have to override it for every for all of the larger sizes then you can put it specifically in here but this whole section up here really should be just be designing to be seen on a telephone and then you would change these things down here you'll notice in here it says at media screen this means it's going to be seen on a screen but not everything always is so we also have down here at media print if you're going to want to have a layout where someone can print your page, 
you would put things that would specifically occur in here. You know, this is the purpose of this is so that a web designer can make one website and have it be viewable on everything. And you don't want to, as a web designer, have to modify and update three or four different versions of a website. You want it just to make it once and have it work everywhere. So this is how it works. Um, this is how it works if you are using dimensions and, well, media queries are always this way, I guess. Uh, I was thinking that if we were using a 12 column grid, it might be different, but no media queries are even used if you're using something like Bootstrap or Foundations, which is really the more modern way of going about things. So, um, the other thing that I was telling you about is the box sizing. So what this first couple lines here inside of this is for box sizing, and what that does is makes it so that you don't have to consider the border and the padding inside of a box when you do your mathematical calculations. Um, so they're actually just included. Remember how when we were doing the box model quiz that you took, you have the width of the object inside the box and then you add it on the padding and then you add it on any borders and that's really the amount of space that an object took up. Well, now when you apply box sizing, the box model or the the box itself includes the size of the padding and the and the border. You just have to consider that and the margins. Um, but you also have to consider though that padding on the outside of a box works kind of like a margin and has to be calculated. So for instance, I have padding inside my container for this website. Um, well, in this case, it's going to be 5%, 2.5% 2, 2 on each side. Um, that actually is considered, works into like padding and has to go into the calculations. You'll see, you have to tinker with it a little bit, um, but play with it. I have some basic things in here. I just threw in some basic information for you, but you will need to do at least three different layouts. So let's take a look at how this page actually works. I'm going to pop this open in my uh, Firefox, I guess, or actually I think I hit Chrome there. Let's go ahead and hit Firefox because I have it open. So you can see here that this website has three columns here and two columns down here, and I have margins on the side. That's really just my... 95% or actually no what I'm doing here is I have a limit this is this is my monitor so I have a container that has 990 so I don't I just have padding on the inside but the sides here are because my monitor is greater than 990 it's my monitor on my MacBook here is fairly wide I don't even know it's like 1200 or something but then I have the 15 pixels of padding on the side. So the padding here has to be calculated and figured in these boxes, even though I'm using the box model. So it's going to be the 990 minus the 15 pixels on each side. So it's 960 divided by 3 would be what? 320. So you can see how the box model goes. The only thing I have to consider is the padding that's in this. So that minus the padding divided by 3. So I don't have to consider this padding when I calculate those things. I don't have to add the padding in. Um, and that's how the box model works. Anyway, so let me take a look at this. And if I shrink this up, once I get to below that... 992 pixels I'm going to go into what I have up here where it's everything is really just taking up 100% because I don't tell it to do anything separate differently okay let's talk about how to make something hidden 
So I didn't include that in this sample, but I did include it on your grading rubric. So let's say that I want my nav bar here. I didn't actually make a nav bar. In class, I used a job jQuery sample for this, but let's say I want this nav to disappear once I get to a certain point. Okay, I want to take a look at my source and see, I believe I just called that nav. Yes, I did. So go here. So let's say that on tablets, I don't want that. Maybe I'm going to have a completely different kind of nav bar on tablets than I would on phones. So I'm going to go in here. Um, and I'm going to say nav. Display is none. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay, so when I get to tablet range, right now I'm in the large range, but I put that in the tablet so the nav should disappear. See, it's gone, and once I get smaller, it'll appear again because I only put it in that one particular section between minimum width 768, maximum width 991. So it's just during that, in the middle of that width, that it will disappear, and then it comes back. So you can go ahead and change this stuff all up, have fun with it. Again, these are fairly standard-sized um, dimensions. I think that if you were using Bootstrap or a 12 column grid, they may be off a pixel. You may have to tweak with the, tweak it a little bit there, but in general, this is a good fairly standard set of media queries. So go ahead, make a few layouts, see how this works because your final project, this project as well as your final project will need to be responsive.